He has certainly spacewalked his way into the history books, like without a doubt. He is now part of the fabric of the history of this country. Hi, I'm Sarah Forster, news editor here at The National, and thank you so much for joining me for another edition of A Closer Look. Now, it has been six months since Dr. Sultan Al Nayadi, the UAE's very own Emirati astronaut, went up to live on the space station for six months. Well, it has come that time, he is about to return back to Earth. He is scheduled to leave on Saturday and land on Sunday and to talk a little bit more about his journey back down to Earth, we have invited our space editor in the studio to talk to us and that is Sawad Nazir. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, Sarah. So what is he doing right now? Obviously we're filming this before he set off on his, on his return journey. Um, what will he be doing right now? I think they're probably going to be uh, in full preparation mode to come back. Uh, it's a 24-hour journey home when they depart from the space station aboard a SpaceX Dragon capsule. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure they are checking um, their spacesuits for the journey back and they're making sure their capsule is ready for the return. They're probably in talks with Mission, mission Control in Houston to make mm -hmm. sure everything is in order. Um, for that long journey back home. Now, this is basically, you know, the, the final steps in ensuring that Sultan's uh, six-month mission is a success. We're, we're almost there. Um, and the whole nation, especially the Arab, Arab world, has closely followed this mission. It was the first Arab astronaut to go on an extended uh, mission to space, as well as the first Arab to perform a spacewalk. Mm -hmm. So it's been a historic mission that's um, almost coming to an end once he lands back um, on Earth and with the Dragon capsule that will splash down off the coast of Florida he, on September 3rd. He has certainly spacewalked his way into the history books, like without a doubt. He is now part of the fabric of the history of this country. Now you say it's a 24 hour journey back to, the, to Earth. Um, I presume they'll need snacks. <laughs> and you know, what are they gonna have on board? What's the sequence of events for them returning? Um, once that capsule undocks, essentially, from the ISS. How do they get back down? Sure. So, so the SpaceX capsule uh, flies on autonomous mode. They can take over from within the spacecraft as well. Uh, but this is the sixth rotational flight uh, between NASA and SpaceX. So there have been previous missions that have gone uh, really well, no issues so far. So as soon as they undock from the space station, um, they're going to begin their 24-hour journey home. It's going to fly autonomously on a trajectory, already a pre-planned trajectory by NASA and SpaceX. Um, they're going to relax. They can take their spacesuits off um, during this time. There is a bathroom that's on uh, the capsule, they're going to have snacks with them as well. Oh, okay. um, so it's a pretty comfortable environment as compared to being on, a, on Russia's Soyuz, for example, where you sit in a very cramped space mm -hmm. for that entire ride home mm -hmm. and you land back on, on land, um, hard land, as compared to the SpaceX capsule, which um, lands back on water for a more um, comfortable uh, touchdown. Mm -hmm. Is there any, um, this might seem like a silly question, any in-flight entertainment? <laughs> what do they do when they're on there? 24 hours is a long time. Yeah. Uh, I think they remain in touch with mission control, which is very important. So they're in constant communication with them. They can also do live calls or send pre-recorded videos because sometimes in the past, especially if it's private missions by SpaceX, um, there have been, for example, videos that have been released of astronauts inside the spacecraft. However, this is a government mission. So usually they don't show inside the spacecraft. Mm -hmm. Um, there is live footage, live streaming of the spacecraft actually undocking from the ISS and then um, it turns off um, for a while and it only the live streaming turns back on once uh, the capsule is beginning its deorbit burn into Earth, Earth's mm -hmm. atmosphere and then it also shows the capsule descending uh, down off the coast of Florida, you know, when the parachute opens and then it lands. As for if we're going to see Sultan and his crew exiting the capsule once it's back, mm -hmm. During private missions, for example, the Axiom 2 space mission that included two Saudi astronauts, we did get footage of, you know, live scenes of the two astronauts and their colleagues coming out of the capsule. It's incredible seeing that because you see the capsule being dragged, uh, being uh, loaded onto a boat, and then you see they open the capsule door up, they unlock it, unbolt it, and then one by one they come out. And you kind of see them kind of trying to, you know, maintain their balance because they're getting used to gravity again. 
So if we get those scenes of Sultan exiting the space station, because he was up there for six months, yeah. as compared to the Saudi astronauts who were up there for a week. Mm. So um, it's definitely interesting. It would be interesting to see him uh, exiting the capsule, those first moments of him experiencing gravity again. Yeah, it's a shame they don't live stream the whole thing because they'd have so many viewers on that, wouldn't they? Right. People literally just sitting there watching them sit there <laughs> inside the capsule. I agree. It's what people live for these days. You know, there's actually a live stream of um, what you can see from the space station, mm -hmm. um, the view of Earth, and it goes on 24-7. It never turns off. It's a live stream. So. Seeing astronauts and what they're doing inside of the space station or inside a capsule, just in, you know, in their natural environment, I think that would be uh, something to watch for sure. It's the reality TV, that you want, isn't it? <laughs> Sp that's a great idea, space reality TV show. <laughs> Maybe one day, come on, NASA, you can do it. Um, all right, so let's say he splashed down. Uh, what's the first thing he's going to do? Because obviously they're... Um, you know, he can't just sort of hop on an Emirates flight back to, <laughs> or an Etihad flight back to back home, can he? So um, what's he going to do once he comes out of that capsule? Sure. So I, once astronauts come back to Earth, especially from a long duration mission like this, they go, undergo medical tests, you know, they hand in their experiments, um, everything. They remain in the U.S. Mm -hmm. for the first couple of days, maybe even a few, two weeks at least. And then they can, um, Sultan can come back to the UAE. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's likely that, you know, he'll be coming back for a short term to take part in celebrations that are being held in, in, his, in his honor. Mm -hmm. uh, when Hazal Mansouri, the first UAE astronaut, returned to Earth from his eight-day mission, uh, he was uh, welcomed, he was given a hero's welcome by uh, President Sheikh Mohammed. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sultan al Nayadi will no less have an equally uh, great celebration for him held mm -hmm. on his behalf since he has, you know, floated his way into history books, as you mentioned. Um, so that's the kind of welcome I think he can expect. And then he will return to the US for more debriefing, um, mission debriefing. Um, and then once he comes back to the UE for, uh, for a longer stay, he'll be taking part in a nationwide road shows, for example, to share his experiences. Because that's really what this mission was about in a way, because the Space Center, you know, the Space Center in the UE wants an astronaut corps that can go around the country, around the region, mm -hmm. share their experiences, and really inspire the next generation mm -hmm. to, you know, also pursue careers in STEM. Yeah, I mean, I hope he's warming up his vocal cords because he's going to be doing a lot of talking when he gets back. Mm -hmm. and he's been doing a fair amount whilst he's been up there, but at least it's just on calls, yeah. and he'll be, um, I'm sure, speaking to school kids and you know, just people all around the country. Well, so we'll put. Sultan Al Nayadi to one side for now. Okay. Um, and we'll just talk about another little bit of uh, space news recently, and it was the um, success that India had placing a rover on the moon. Yes. So the Chandrayaan 3 mission was a uh, was the third moon mission by India, and it involved a, a lander that had a rover inside of it. It managed to land successfully on the lunar surface, and uh, the first spacecraft ever to land um, in the South Pole region of the moon. Mm -hmm. um, now, this is a very interesting region to explore. It's uh, a lot of space agencies are trying to land their um, lander, landing modules over there. And the rover descended. It, India just made it look so easy, which is, it is absolutely not. <laughs> um, you know, there have been, there's a very low success rate of lunar landings. Mm -hmm. They managed to pull this off. And then when the rover descended onto the surface, you know, we saw incredible pictures um, from the rover. I think just yesterday, um, this week, they posted pictures of a huge four meter crater that the rover managed to avoid. Oh. So it took an image of that rover, uh, sorry, the crater, and uh, then the rover was directed by mission control to um, re, uh, re-navigate itself. Mm -hmm. So it's quite incredible to see. It's almost like a smart car um, like on AI. the lunar surface. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like an autonomous AI. OK. I mean, it's, it's incredible, first of all, that it just landed in, in a working order, right? And the fact that now it then has to navigate things on the moon that can damage it as well, it's kind of... Um, uh, you know, it's a risky, it's a... For sure. Yeah. That's part, part of the complications that come up with lunar landings. Um, not only because it, the sequence has to be so accurate for it to land, for example, a very accurate software algorithm um, for it to touch down softly. But the problem is that the lunar surface, the lunar terrain is just so unstable. For mm -hmm. example, craters, rocks, 
you have to avoid that while you land, but as well as if you have a rover, for example, and it's, it's going around the surface, there's going to be a lot of obstacles that it's, gonna, it's going to have to avoid. But so far, it seems uh, the mission by India is going uh, flawlessly, and um, it's, uh, it, it's supposed to bring uh, a lot of uh, great scientific knowledge to the community. For example, it's recorded the first temperatures in the South Pole region mm -hmm. uh, because it's the first craft, uh, spacecraft to land there. Uh, everything that it's going to do is going to be, I think, important information for the science community. Wow. And just out of curiosity, do we know who is next to try and land something on the moon? There's a lot of countries that are trying to land on the moon. The U.S. is trying to land um, in the lunar uh, South Pole region. China is trying to land in the lunar South Pole region. Mm -hmm. uh, Japan also has a mission to the moon. The UAE wants to have a rover on the moon. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to try with its Russia 2 rover. Russia 2, yeah. um, so there are plenty of missions that are now targeting um, the moon. Again, I think ambi international ambitions have shifted to the moon again. There's a renewed interest mm -hmm. uh, because, first of all, the lunar South Pole region, for example, has trapped ice, um, ice water, which they believe they can use to fuel uh, rockets and spacecraft mm -hmm. and then send astronauts beyond the moon from there. Yeah. Uh, it's easier to lift rockets off from the moon because like that has... Stepping a stepping stone, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fascinating. All right. Well, thank <laughs> you so much, um, Sarah. I am sure we will hear from you again once Sultan al Niadi is down and we see how the whole mission goes. But otherwise, for now, thank you much so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for watching our episode of A Closer Look, brought to you from right here inside the Nationals newsroom. Now remember, if you'd like to see any of our previous episodes, they are all on our YouTube channel. And if you have any suggestions for a future episode, you can always leave your suggestion in the comment box below.